Howdy, howdy, folks. Welcome back to Hoot and a Half. I'm your host, Matt King. This is my lovely co-host, Mike Sheffer. And today we are joined with Connor Wood, a.k.a. Fibula. You may know him from TikTok. He is a rising internet star and now actually becoming a pretty good friend. I think I so. I hope so. I was pretty fired up that like we finally met. Yeah, I had me like too. seen you on TikTok a lot. You were really, really funny. And then uh, Cody, Cody Co. <laughs> to, <laughs> to name drop, invited uh, Patricia and I out for a brunch last Saturday. We don't know who's going to be there. I show up and you're there. And I'm like, it's about time. That was fun. Yeah. That was really fun. Also, yeah, about time. Yeah. It's just so funny like seeing all of you guys in person because like you guys were like my. My boys, grow, like I say, growing up, it, freshman year of college before, you know. Right. So we both went to the same college. UT Austin? Yeah. Yes. Oh, and I'm, wow. I'm surprised I didn't even know this about you because I think, you know, like, you, oh, Brittany Broski is from Texas. I knew that. Yeah. I didn't know there was another UT person out there who was, like, killing it on the internet. And we couldn't believe how small of a world it, it was. was. Yeah. Even though we weren't at UT at the same time, right? Barely. Barely. Yes. I graduated... I walked 18, graduated 19. Okay. So, <laughs> but I was there uh, a 20 super senior. I mean, you got your cape? I was not present on campus anymore, but <laughs> what's the, what was the go-to bar for you out there? Cuz like it changed like year by year, but we ended up like my good vibe. When, when, how many times am I going to say vibe today? It's okay. It's we, like my two and a half beer I forgive like, you. word of it's the okay. day. It's okay. There's never, an, never enough vibes. Yeah, no, I agree. The world is built on vibes. String theory. Vibrations. 100% like vibrations mm -hmm. equal vibes and energy. And energy equals and something. Anyways. We're <laughs> You're so French. close. We're done with French. You're so, so close. close. And metric system. Um, e equals, energy equals, e metric equals system. MC squared. Squared. Who said that? John F. Kennedy. Hitchcock. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Elijah Wood. He's a big Texas guy. Who? Elijah Wood. Remind big me who Austin that is. guy. What? Elijah Wood. The oh, from, Gremlin. Ta Goblet. Uh, the Hobbit. Goblet of Fire. What is yeah. it? The, ho the, ho <laughs> Sorry, the wait, Hobbit. The is Hobbit. What is it? <laughs> yeah, I met him at South by. I met him at South by. I went to his DJ set. Why does everybody have an Elijah Wood story? He, I, he put me on his Instagram story. He, we used oh. to wear headbands too at South by, and he asked for a headband to join like the headband squad. Oh, you've told me wow. this. Yeah, and so apparently the thing in Texas though is like his real friends call him Eli. Yeah. So if you call him Elijah, he knows you're like a fan. But if you're like, yo, Eli. He'll probably come over and talk to you because it's like neck to you, look at you. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I've heard at least. But yeah, oh, he's a cool dude. He is a really Big cool awesome dude. guy. I tell you what, he spins some serious tracks. Oh, he does do that, right? He DJs yeah. like house parties and stuff. Yeah. We were in like a warehouse, giving me very shooting vibes, like dangerous vibes. But it was Elijah, oh, Eli. I'm sorry, <laughs> and it was just like awesome. He felt safe, and he filmed me. I was being, I was even the worm. I don't know why. I've been. Doing this thing when I have like a certain amount of beers, and this was two years ago, so I guess it's been a two-year phase, where I just like break out into either one of two moves. One is the worm, and I don't get that one. But this one I get. Like I find a song where I need to, Ooh, and I'm laying on the ground, pump. and I find a stranger. I'm like, resuscitate me. And it only works if the stranger knows that you don't have like epilepsy. Oh, right. And I, they I don't, like that obviously, move. You're on the resuscitation. Yeah. They get, they get the... the Electric pads going yeah. and bump you up. You're a pretty limber fella. Yeah. Like I, I was watching a TikTok of yours the other day where you were like drinking and then you got your friend to you guys did like the human cartwheel yeah. kind of together. Um yeah, that that was hard. But <laughs> I can't do that anymore. Oh really? I'm out of shape. That was like last year. Yeah, I've gotten, so you I've kind of let really go. Downhill Did you get injured or just you're hitting your senior years and? Um, no, I like tried to run it back and do the one year anniversary of that video. It popped off. Um, that was right when Watermelon Sugar High dropped, and so like I was like, we have to do a video to this, and I saw that on TikTok. And I was like, let's just try this. So like I was trying to do that, and I was like seeing stars, so we could only do it for the, the exact video, and then he dropped me. I tried to do it this year. I couldn't even bend back enough to like pick him up, like. Like full on face in his balls, like, okay, let's just quit. Right, like, we couldn't do it. Did it you was post a long that? Quarantine. No, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, it didn't even make the cut. No, it was like painful. It was. Like you do a backflip? Yeah, actually. Still, I don't know. When was the last time you did a backflip? At a party about a month ago, and I was like, I can do a backflip. There were all these guys and like TikTok gymnasts, okay. which like I was like, guys, like move. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna do one. Obviously, I did. So they were on the trampoline. I do it. I like don't even tuck my legs. It's just like my completely horizontal <laughs> two by four body, just like flipping. 
I smacked my face like into the springs. Oh no! And I was like, "Oh, I'm sorry." <laughs> I, uh, I like misjudged the depth of the <laughs> trampoline. <laughs> I did it three more times, where and then finally someone was like, "Just tuck your legs." Okay. And then I tucked my legs, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that's what I was." Yeah, it's just like different trampoline than I'm used to. <laughs> I'm always worried that I'll never be able to do a backflip, and it's one of the things. That my childhood self really expected Why me to like be able to do. Can't do it. There's a height limit, I, like, I think. There's a I, yeah. I'm six three. Yeah, I, that's, that's a, a big... lot of body to flip over. Right. Well, I'm six four, and I like figured it <laughs> that's out. That's right. So that's right. I believe in you. Well, yeah, we'll definitely need to do some we'll lessons have to after give this. It a shot, yeah. yeah, I I think I could do it on a trampoline, yeah. but the standing back tuck is quite a move. I learned how to do it in sand first. You elevate like sand on a cooler. Do it, do it, do it. And then you do it like off a dock into water. Actually, probably water first, then sand. And then you get the like. But you have to have like a pretty good core. Can you imagine the first person who did a backflip? <laughs> that shit had to have been insane. Like, hold the fuck up. Because then every all there had to have been so many broken necks after the first person to do a backflip. Because then everybody else thought they could do it. Why? Because they go, Why well, would an individual ever be like, I need to back risk flip. my life for this? Move. I, I, like, well, I don't know. First it was just the, they were risking their life every day. Yeah. You might as well die doing a, a something you love. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it is interesting to think about. I don't know. What was the question? <laughs> I don't know. We went from you the guys bar. are both right, giving so you're me... a pretty limber guy. Oh yeah. And that's how Hold we. On. Uh, what are the vibes we're giving you? I was talking about the vibe of the room, and it's giving me like big East Coast, like Ezra Koenig. Um, I mean, you're obviously wearing rowing blazers. One of my favorite brands, plug. You just said Ezra Ezra Koenig? Koenig, sorry. Oh, I used to say Koenig for the longest time. I'm I, pretty sure it's I've Koenig. I've never heard it out the loud. The lead singer of Vampire Weekend? Yeah. Are you a big Vampire Weekend fan? Huge. Like, like one of my favorite. I know. That's, I yeah. pointed it out to him. He through was, the I, fire, through the flames. He sang it out loud when, we, when uh, you were in the bathroom, yeah. You're a big Vampire Weekend huge. fan. Huge. Huge. Yeah. That's my, little, that is my favorite band. I know. It's <laughs> giving me, I was saying, you guys are both giving me like big East Coast, like, and then this watercolor like what are you a watercolor yeah you're getting oh, yeah like, that was huge, my like, first one I martha's ever did. vineyard yeah like east coast vibe you guys have like a really lovely liquor store right down the street like walk like five minute walk oh it's the best oh the guys are so cool like, you never know like, who you're gonna see in there too really? yeah the singer jojo goes there a lot like, bill nye what yeah are you seen jojo bill bill nye? Nye? i've never seen him in the liquor store but i assume but bill nye lives in this neighborhood and if he ever went there <laughs> go to that liquor store. How old were you when you had your first drink? And can you tell us about that experience? Yeah, it's like not great to say. If you don't, okay. If you don't want to, then thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah, I mean, okay. it's like, like thirteen. Know, Pretty young. Yeah, that's like first, 12, eighth was, grade going on ninth grade or what? I think it's actually younger. I think it's because that's not that's not high school. That's like sixth grade. That's like eighth grade. Yeah, but my friends were like always like grade. the friends that I grew up with were always two and three years older than me. Mm-hmm. So they were like ahead, and I was wearing it was Halloween. In our neighborhood, like, the parents would always have parties for, like, the parents. Kids usually went to someone else's house. And we weren't, like, it wasn't, like, a party or anything. But I was a bumblebee as, like, a funny joke. So I was, like, a sixth grader. Like, me and all my friends, like, we weren't really like, going out and trick-or-treating. We were just, like, going to our parents' party and whatever. And um, I had, like, a big fat suit on. And so my friends that were older were, like, we're going to go into the garage and we're going to take a bunch of beers out of the fridge. <laughs> and oh, and, and they're, going, the... they're going in your bumblebee suit. And I was, like. Guys, no. I we cannot do this. We cannot do this. We cannot do this. And they were like, You're the only one that can hold it. You have to. And I was like, okay, let's go. And we went in and we opened the fridge and I think we took nine beers and there was like seven of us. Cans, bottles. Can, cans. Oh, I think it was Coors okay, Light. Yeah, okay. And we go in there and they stuff my stupid butt bee suit. And I have it on. I'm like, the parents are all inside and I'm like, how, is, how did I end up being you the know, drunk? We probably had church the next day uh, too. Like um and we get on a golf cart it was like a golf course neighborhood in texas and there's like six of us or something and there's some people on the back and i'm sitting on the ground and then there's like four people on the seat and we get like one of the beers out and i took like a swig and i was like i'm wasted (laughs) and then i got freaked out and i was like they're gonna go and count the beers and like we're gonna get in trouble and then i freaked everybody else out and we threw all the beers into the lake (laughs) Like all, eight of the unopened beers just you into took the lake. One sip yes. and just and abandoned I was like, the I'm ship. Boys, we have to get rid of these. Like, like paranoia 101, just yes. like freaked out. And we throw all the beers into the lake, and then 
they all start so, bawling. <laughs> <laughs> and the Baron's house was right there on the water. I was like, God, they're going to come out here. Like, none of our parents fished. They're going to go fishing tonight at 10 p.m. on Halloween evening with all their friends at a cocktail hour. And they're going to see all these coarse silver bullets bobbing up and down. And I was like, this is the end of the world. Nothing happened, obviously. <laughs> And that was the beginning of the end because when nothing <laughs> happened, I like got my sweet taste of the nectar. Yeah. And That's it, such a truth, though, about like the first time you get your hands on alcohol, you get way yeah. too much, and then you realize we have to dispose of this right. yeah. some way or another. We had a guy that was like a beer guy, and I don't know who this man was, never saw his face, but you called him, you told him what you wanted, and you had the cash, and he, was he dropped it delivered. off. We were like, we didn't even know what we wanted to order. Yeah. And we were like, a 30 pack of Keystone. Yeah. Ugh. And it's five of us. Yeah. And we're 13 <laughs> years old. We couldn't even finish one. Right. I remember we brought, we, he dropped it off. We brought it up to his house and go to the game room. We had a sip. I couldn't even finish my first beer. And then we How freaked old you? out. Um, eighth grade going into freshman okay. yeah, year yeah, of yeah. high school. And but we were in a safe environment. We're not going out right. driving or right. anything or getting involved in any other types of shenanigans. But we had this oh shit moment where we realized at the end of the night we had only drank six and a half beers yeah. amongst us, and we had yeah. to dispose of it. Yeah. So we went down to the end of a cul-de-sac and we <laughs> threw. We would just throw them up in the air and let them like splatter. Yeah. Yeah. Just disposing, getting rid of the evidence. The scariest thing in the world because like for some reason. Your parents always did end up in that one place. You're like, they're never going to look here for whatever you were hiding. They always ended up finding it on the specific day. Oh. You know, they decided to clean your top shelf of your bookshelf. Or like, yeah. I feel like you're on the verge of saying something. I can see your I lips. just have a lot of questions for you. Yeah. What is the worst thing your parents ever caught you doing? Or like the most trouble you ever got in with your parents? Were they ever like, Connor? It's the last goddamn straw. No. I don't know how Texas parents are. You're pretty close. (laughs) I can't do the Texas. Matt can do the really good. The lock, the Dallas accent is very locked. Yeah, there is. And I only get it when I'm in Texas. I get the accent back. Oh, you used to have one? Yeah, probably. I but like when I go and hang out with my friends at like and their and their parents and like we go to a ranch or something, I fully get it. Yeah. If I have a couple drinks, like it's like on accident, but like I grew up with it, so it's like super easy to just like, especially after like five beers. You sound very like Laguna Beach vibes, though. We, You're, like, yeah, we, has Newport changed you? Big time, yeah. I'm a, I'm an asshole now. <laughs> <laughs> So you're saying you split time between Texas and Newport? Yeah, a little bit. And then um, came out here for Bird post grad. Well, actually, post first let go from Bumble. <laughs> um, and then moved out to Santa Monica off of like Wilshire and Bundy. So like proper Santa Monica. And then now, I guess it's like Brentwood adjacent. Okay. Which means nothing. Santa Monica. Yeah. So I'm excited. It's going to be really good. I'll be living alone. So I don't know if that's. Oh, what'd you get? An apartment? Studio? Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's a one bedroom, but it's it's good. And there's um, like studio space underneath it, which I also I might get as well, just to have studio space. Yeah, like like it's like this size film studio or like podcast, and then I paint. And You're I a can't, painter. I I do. Yeah, I paint. Oh, I used to paint. That's that was my like w- my, like income in college was I would paint. I I elaborate. It's it's, it's random. Yeah. So this woman came. Like into our house, like at my parents' house, and I used to. My mom used to like need things for the house, and I'm like, I'll just paint that. I'll do that, and I didn't think anything of it. And then this woman came in, my parents are friends with, and she's a real estate. Like she like sets houses at what's it called? Like stages. Stage, houses. Stages. Yeah. And yeah. She's like, I need like a bunch of paintings just like that, and so I did it, and she paid me. And then I was like, oh, sick. And then she like referred me when I went to school, referred me to all these people in Austin that do the same thing. So I was like selling like one or two paintings, big paintings, like f- like six foot by five foot paintings for mantles and stuff, like once or twice a month, and that would pay like like spending money and then rent. What kind of style are we talking about? You name it, I would copy shit. Okay, I am, I was born a scammer. Yeah, in one way <laughs> you or another, feel like an artist. Yeah. Cheating in high school led to like I I'd literally be like, what vibe you want to go for? Like, send me some artists that you like, and then. Send me your favorite, like, whatever painting you would put here. I'll do it for one 
twentieth of the price. And you would you can hand paint. Like you'd go and buy, you know, the kind canvas, of paint to buy. Yeah, the the paint. It was always acrylic because it's so cheap and it dries so fast. And then did you ever take lessons or this was no. all self taught? Self taught. I was like, if you don't like it, no big deal. Like it's you just pay for the stuff and then I don't care. I have have you shared this with your audience? Do they know that you're a painter? No. Oh man, man, yeah. a mystery. Actually, I posted one photo, but it was just like a joke, and it was like a thirst trap. Like right okay. when I started on TikTok. Um, and it was just like a painting from my mom's house. But I haven't been able to paint because I haven't had the space. So and I didn't get my security deposit back for my last place because I had painted all over the floor. Because I was but the floor. Well, it's like you lay these huge canvases. I didn't have the space. Uh, so oh, it's like bladder on the I floor. I would say a lot of it would be on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. This episode of Hoot and a Half is brought to you by Babbel. Now, if you're a travel cultural nut like myself and my you're probably interested in learning new languages. In college, I studied Mandarin Chinese. In high school, I studied Spanish. And now Mike and I are about to go to Italy, and we're very excited to pick up some Italian. And lately, we've been using Babbel, which is the best language app. And look, you can see it right here on our home screen. Got it right there, ready to go every day. Babbel teaches using real-life situations and dialogues, and it's proven to get you speaking a new language in three weeks. And with 10 to 15-minute lessons that are super short and fun, you'll be speaking a new language language in as little as three weeks. Babbel's lessons are built with over 150 real language teachers. So there's no algorithms, there's no AI, there's no machine learning. This is real language learning. Babbel is a full learning ecosystem. Decide how you want to learn with the app, podcast, games, live classes, and more, all as part of your subscription. There is a ton of variety with Babbel. And it really works. University studies have shown that 15 hours of Babbel is equal to an entire semester of college Spanish. I'm surprised with how quickly I progress through the lessons on Babbel. Time just flies when I'm using the app and learning a new language. Babbel has made me realize that I can truly learn a language in a fun and quick way. And what's great is that I look forward to using it every day. So get 65 percent off Babbel when you use the link in our description. Start speaking a new language in three weeks with Babbel and get 65% off your Babbel subscription using the link in our description. And once again, thanks to Babbel for sponsoring today's episode. Check out Babbel, learn a new language, and now on with the episode. You're a painter? I am. I dabble in watercolor. Yeah. That's like been one of my new hobbies yeah. um, that I with picked quarantine? up. In knitting as well. Knitting I haven't knitting. gotten back into because knitting... It's like you can start and then you mess up and then you have to restart and then you hate it. Oh, I'm good. I'm good right now. Yeah, why not? Okay, just take it. Um, that would be really embarrassing for me because it's on camera. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, got into watercolors. I really like making like mini watercolors of people's houses. I made one of uh, it's my... so good. Oh, thank you. I mean, that was one I just found a picture of a house on the internet just to test the colors. And then I made one of my girlfriend's grandparents' house. Yeah. And then I made one of... Oh, there's another one. I can't even remember what I painted it of. But I need to work on another one. But now I'm getting into spooky villages. Right. And I am just so intrigued. Okay. So last year I got into tiny Christmas yeah. villages. I saw our empty credenza sitting, sitting underneath Wait, the TV. Wait, can you really quickly? Because yeah. I think it would help a lot of people, what? present company included. <laughs> Now, what is a credenza? A credenza? <laughs> is that a type of pretzel? Um, It's like a TV stand. Oh, okay. Like a really nice glorified TV stand. So just like call it, it what it sounds, is. It sounds like it would be a pretzel. Did you say a pretzel? Yeah. Th- like these a are the types of things that take you from like a college kid to an adult man is going. <laughs> My credenza in the foyer yeah, needs exactly. a spooky village. Calling, yes. it a, calling it a TV stand is very fratty in college calling it credenza is i'm an adult and i have my own space but if it's made out of like Can glass and metal it's that's a tv that's stand. a tv stand but like, yeah credenza is like made out of wood it's got like drawers or like places to put stuff okay. yeah 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 but it's yes a t- so it's, it's a dresser that you put a tv it's on. like a living room dresser it's but it's not a dresser it's only usually it's like pretty low to the what's ground what's in the drawers Books, um, DVDs, video wires, game consoles, stuff wow, like that. Cool. Yeah, a credenza. You so, should get one for your new place. Can you spell credenza? C R E D C R E D E N Z A. Credenza. credenza. It's just exactly how it sounds. Yeah. yeah. Credenza. Credenza. Roll it is a weird word though. Like I heard someone say it for the first time, and I was like, "Oh, it's a TV stand." But when you're an adult, I've learned that you have to say things the right way. Yeah, you yeah. do. You're you in have the market to. for a credenza, yeah, not a TV you, stand. Someone will call you so. <laughs> The credenza, I made a, I saw it was an opportune place to put a tiny Christmas village. It was something that I've always been interested in and loved, um, but have never 
gotten into until I did it. And then I realized Halloween uh, villages were a whole new thing. And what I'm also realizing is how freaking expensive it is, dude. Yeah. This, he, he just bid on... What was that? Uh, I just bid village? on uh, it's the Trick or Treaters Haven on eBay um, by Lemax. By Lemax, the brand for the, any. Types there's of Lemax villages. and Department Fifty Six. They're like the creme de la creme of uh, of tiny Christmas and Halloween village uh, stuff. It's like the BMW and the Mercedes. Here, we'll, we'll um, give a little teaser right now. Oh yeah, yeah. give a little yeah, teaser. Yeah, because, bring, so bring I, them drove, out, bring I them drove out. down to San Diego bring them out, bring yesterday. Them out. I drove. All the way down to San Diego yesterday, and I spent over a thousand dollars, a little bit more, on over like six, twelve, fifteen, sixteen pieces. Matt, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> this is what this I'm is into. This is a big like commitment. Over... I didn't realize the amount of money that you're spending and the amount of. Oh yeah, I mean, involved. look at this one. This one's thirty-five dollars. That one is how much? I don't know. In the top, couple, right? uh, this is seventy-five dollars. I just like got a like a. Hot flash. Yeah Matt, yeah, Matt really doesn't spend money at all on anything, and <laughs> this is like his one place where he's like, "Mike, do you think it's okay if I like get this for like fifty bucks?" And I'm like, "Yes, but it's okay it. to do it. It makes you happy. You can do it." And not only does it spark me joy, but it also sparks a lot of people's joy when they come in and they see it, and that That's really true. makes my day. I, I'll say I do enjoy a tiny village, be it whatever season. <laughs> I do want to ask a specific question to you. Did you see Spy Kids, the one where they're stuck on the island with Bill Island Nye? of Lost Dreams with yeah. Steve Buscemi, of course. Do you I know did. what I'm thinking about right now? Uh Come what on. are you thinking of? What does he look at the island from his uh from dude, I know Spy Come Kids on. Come won on. Come on. really well. I know, I know, but you have to know based on the conversation that we were having what I'm thinking about. Who, what, when, where, and why? Da, 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 the da, dumb da. men? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> see, see, little day. Based on the tiny village, like, do you remember when he had the like mountain and he would move the little animals around? Yes. And he had the tiny little shark. That like did something inside my body where like I can't explain it. Like the feeling that I was so just like I need these tiny real animals. Tiny things are nice. You get to play God. You know, I think maybe that's what it is. And they have that profound line Wait, in Spy you, Kids too, think, where oh. he goes, "Do you ever think God looks down and sees what He's created and is too scared to like come back or interact with it or something like that?" And that's why He's too scared to interact with the dinosaurs He's made. Was that Steve Buscemi? That was that scientist. Steve Buscemi. <laughs> Credenza Buscemi. Listen, hold on. I'm gonna say something. <laughs> people who pronounce things wrong, a lot of people will make fun of them. Because it's like, oh, how do you know how to say that? But what I've learned is that if someone pronounces a word wrong, it means that they learned that word from reading it. And that's something yes. to be applauded. I, 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 don't feel I, bad I, about dude, pronouncing and words don't, wrong. And I'm sorry if I came off like no, that. No, no, you no, did. You did. I don't this care. Is a general... But I'll also, no shame, say whatever I – like, correct me. I don't care. I'm not going to get my feelings hurt. All, same thing with names. I'm like, people that have confusing last names or confusing first names know that they're confusing. Yeah. Like, And I'm willing to learn it and I'll do my best. Like I'm, I'm Bush, cool Bushemi 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 yeah cool now I know <laughs> like cool normalize changing something after you learn more about yes. it yes yes um, and I'm open with sharing it with you do you think that maybe you like tiny seasonal villages because you have a god complex oh no I don't think so I think I, think I have a big I, I I love the joy of it and I think you know time's always passing time is fleeting and I think. It sucks when like a holiday comes around and you really haven't felt the Christmas spirit oh, okay. hit you or you haven't really felt like the Halloween was in the air. Like the reason why people are festive is because it feels good to like really embrace the moment that you're in. And when you're doing the villages, you're there. You're looking yeah. at it. You're, you're very you're present. Expo- you get to pop on the playlist, away listen to the music. You get in the mood. Yeah. And you know that you're here. You're experiencing the season. And that's. The beauty of it. Because when you're a kid, your whole filter system is like, okay, it's holiday season. Right. Like That's where your brain is. You hear it on the radio. Right. You see it in the stores. When you're an adult, you're doing all these other things. And like you can't really live in the moment. But you do a tiny Christmas village. Even if you spend three hours on it and you do a couple of hunts on eBay, you then you put it out there. Right. For that month, anytime someone comes into the house, anytime you walk past it, you're really living you're in the moment. You're really living in the tiny Christmas village. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's very festive. It's, yeah, no, that's awesome. But now it's I'm worried right. if I'm giving you the bug right now because now you're going to be a potential buyer in our market uh, and in LA increasing area. the prices. Yes, of the spooky village. I wouldn't spend too much time worrying about that. 
Um, <laughs> I think that it's awesome. I'm curious, like, how quickly between Halloween and Christmas are you going to be switching those out? It's going to be a quick change for sure. So, like, yeah, quick change. Like, like, for a while. November, I kept November the Christmas, 1st, you're I kept the, done with Halloween? Well, I kept the Christmas Village up until probably May. Do they make, oh, oh we wow. talked about this, but they don't have, like, Thanksgiving Villages, because that would be You can't. There, there are some. There are some, but it's not, it's pretty like, short It'd be pretty violent, too, probably. It would be violent scenes. and... Not, like not, not, not the right level. Not the like the vibe that you want to be present right, for. Right. I mean, you'll moving. have to come see it. I would love to. Would love, I would love to. I'd love for you to visit. I would love to help set her up, too, if you needed it. An and that's the hand. thing. You can you can be included in it if you want to buy, you know, a little pumpkin. I, yeah, wait, let me, let me I get, need some accessory. I need some I would characters. Love to, I would love to grab so, um, um, a piece of the village, like a piece of real estate in the village. Yes. If you uh, uh, <laughs> Right now, I'm really in the market for, like, a little character. Um, what, like a pumpkin? No, I kind of like the trick-or-treat characters. Like, like people Slenderman? who look like they live there. Like, I need, like, kids, like, in costumes with trick-or-treat bags okay. or, like... If you just look up trick or treat figurines, you could probably find something. I'll, and I would, if you want to contribute, if I would you love do, to. I yeah, just I start a registry, uh, really, <laughs> for just the people in my life to uh, pay I would love for to. additions that sounds to awesome. the village. It's fun to contribute to that. But hopefully, I'll give you the the. Uh, it's too late right now. I feel like to get in right now. I mean, this is like Bitcoin, like peaking. Yeah, this is right this now is with, a very with niche community. Peak spooky season. I wouldn't buying. have like pegged you for this. I, individual. I've only known a couple people in my life, and they're all like seventy-five year old about women. to croak. Yeah. yeah, but and that's okay. Like I'm, I have so much respect for you. You know what? Maybe I know where my interest is coming from. We every year, my dad and I set up a train around the Christmas tree, and it's on a track. Yeah, and there are little tiny people and logs that they transport, and the conductor and the whole spiel. And I love that. That's your community. starter Christmas yeah. village. And it is such a bitch to set up. But then, but then when it's up, it's like this is vibes. Oh, it's the coolest thing ever because it's like an electric thing and like it's removable from the track. But once it touches the track, it's a big thing too. It's like, like they're heavy. Yeah, yeah, it's substantial. You need you need a credenza for yeah, it. Yeah, you do. <laughs> like if I'm gonna store that thing, I better have some credenza space. C- credenza. Credenza. I'm sorry. Are you a big wedding guy? Like, have you been to a lot of weddings? Are you? I are you haven't a hit been to weddings? a lot of weddings. You um, seem like you seem like you'd be a hit at a wedding. I would. I love weddings. I like. I love the idea of weddings. Um, I don't think I'm like approaching the age where like a lot of my friends are getting engaged and getting married. So I think like in the next year, year and a half, like there will be like a lot of wedding attendance. But you haven't had that life I've experience. Been, no, just like yet. it was. There's a little break from, and it's weird in Texas because like your friends like ring by spring, senior year, the getting yes. the MRS degree. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I like I had like a little like break in between like. When you go as like a teenager and your cousins are there to like, now you're like an individual going to see your friend get married, which is like a weird vibe. Have you been a uh, groomsman before? No. Yes, one well, as a child, but like, um, That's a what child. you were a groomsman as a child? Maybe yeah, a ring. How was the sec- bachelor party? It was like a second <laughs> marriage, and it was like all of the cousins. It was like my uncle. Oh, okay. oh. and like his kids were there. And so, like, you I guys think went that to, it wasn't like a friends. You guys went to Tijuana for the bachelor party? Uh, Cabo. <laughs> did, wait, did you actually? Yeah. You got to go as a it, child they, to Cabo for a bachelor party. It was like a bachelor party. Like, we it was just like were, a family like, vacation. In Cabo, yeah, yeah, and, like, okay. the family a guy's went, and, like, trip. Yeah. So, I shouldn't have said yes to being a groomsman because that's just not correct. Um, the wedding coming up, I think I would be a groomsman. I haven't been invited yet, but we'll see. Did you get a wedding invite? <laughs> you, you hopefully you're they just be got a engaged groomsman. over the weekend. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You'll definitely. Be yeah. I was gonna say if you got a wedding invite before a groomsman invite, you're probably not. Yeah. My friend got engaged, and I was really expecting that um, I was gonna be a groomsman, and then uh, I didn't get asked. And then I always, do you ever have like an imaginary list of like who your groomsman would be? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's like your MySpace top eight. You like yeah. to move it around. And then when I when I thought he was gonna ask me, I was like, "Well, I'm taking him off mine." And then I get a call like right after I deleted him. <gasps> oh no! So asking me, "Do you want to be a groomsman?" I was like, "Of course I do." So wow! I added him back onto the list. How many groomsmen can you have? What's the What's the limit? There's no limit, right? And you can't have like uh, twenty four groomsmen. Wedding? 12. 12 is the max. Right? I was going to say eight. Eight is it's like, like a lot. Standard. I mean, that's like a lot of people. 12 in line. is big. I have three brothers. They have to. Is that is that like they're all right I'm automatically, right? Yes. Groom's men. Yes. Is your best man one of your three brothers? I don't know. I'm so glad I don't have any brothers. You don't have any brothers? No. I would. I, I don't know 
how I would react. Yeah, I feel like if you have to pick one of your brothers, then the other yeah. ones are like, what yeah. the, what that? What the would hell? they get offended? Or yeah. do you have like a favorite brother? My brother would be my best man. Yeah. Hope you're enjoying this episode. We'll be right back after a quick word from today's sponsor. You know, Mike, I really enjoy a nice glass of wine. You're a man who enjoys the finer things in life. Especially after I've had a long, hard day working on my spooky village. I like to pour just a nice red wine and look over my fortress and village and just marvel at what I've created. And you've become quite a connoisseur of wine thanks to today's sponsor, Vivino. Today's episode is sponsored by Vivino. I'm no wine expert, but I like what I like. But I also love trying new varieties, you know, wines that my local store normally wouldn't carry. And that's the main reason why I like to use Vivino. Now, Vivino, if you don't already know, is the world's biggest online wine marketplace. And they're also the largest online wine community with over 50 million users who have rated and reviewed just about every wine there is. Vivino carries all of our favorite wines like Silver Oak, Prisoner, you name it. Plus, they offer exciting personalized suggestions based on your taste. Some wines I didn't even know existed, but now I know more about what kind of wines I like thanks to Vivino. For example, I was on Vivino and I was looking for a good, affordable red wine, like a Cab Sauv that was really high in tannins, and I came across Donati and it became my new favorite wine, and I didn't even know it existed before. The wine world can be pretty intimidating, but with Vivino, you can actually learn a lot about what you like and what you want to try, and their recommendation platform really helps you discover new wines that you may not even know exist. And their app is everything you need to know about wine and so much more right in your hand. You can see all the ratings and reviews and you can even leave your own review. And of course, you can buy wine. <laughs> and Patricia and I, our favorite thing to do when we're walking around the stores is we like to scan the bottle and see what all the other people on Vivino have to say about a wine. And not even at the store, but whenever we're like at a party hanging out with friends and they're trying to impress you with that bottle of wine and you wanna see what it's really about, we just take it to the side and scan it on Vivino. And then you can read reviews. You can learn all about it. It's like having your own personal wine guide in your pocket at all times. And you can see which of your friends have really expensive or cheap taste. <laughs> Without a doubt, I've really stepped up my wine game, all thanks to Vivino. So give Vivino a try. We know you're going to love it. So go to Vivino.com slash Hoot and use our code Hoot, H-O-O-T, for 20% off your first order up to $200. That's Vivino, V-I. I-V-I-N-O dot com slash hoot, H-O-O-T, and use the promo code hoot at checkout to save 20% off on your first order up to $200. Vivino.com slash hoot, code hoot, save 20% off up to $200. That's Vivino.com slash hoot and use code hoot. See site for details and terms apply. And now back to the episode. Have you ever, <laughs> uh, no, have you ever seen a ghost alien almost died? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Just cover all the bases. I've, no, I've, I mean, is that on the list of things that you're going to ask me? To? I have ghost, alien, almost died. <laughs> no, but I believe in all of the above. Oh, okay. Almost dying. I probably almost died. You never seen a ghost? You never seen a UFO? Never had a supernatural experience? No, but I'm like the biggest. Like, okay, someone tells me like I tell ghosts, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, yeah, you did. I believe you, 100. percent Right. I what's believe it. What's the best day of your life? <laughs> What, what was That's the best so day of your life? To date? Besides, besides today, obviously. What? Oh, crap. Okay, I have one, but it's like, it's not like, because it comes to mind as like one of the best days of my life. Sure. But it's not like. You wouldn't want to do it on repeat? Oh, I would. But okay. like, it's not like a cool, insane thing. It's just What's like just a say, good day. One, good one, of, one of the best days, not okay. the best day. I'll go really quick. Um, we got time. My, a lot of my friends went to University of Hawaii on Oahu. And we went and visited them. Like, me and my college friends went and visited all of, like, my friends that go to school out there. And it's a small island, so, like, everybody knows each other. So we went out, and the fraternities there are, like, you don't really need to join a frat. Like, everyone goes to all the parties anyway because there's not that many people that go to school there, and the, there's not that many parties. And all the parties get busted right away. So basically we go to this amazing part. Like, I'm merging two of my friend groups in Hawaii. And, it was, and like, it's the working. coolest thing ever. We, had, we were, like, 19, and, like, all of us were 19. And they pick us up from the airport. We go drop our stuff off and immediately go to this like frat party. And it's like a pool and we're all on board shorts, no shirt. Like it was amazing. And then we go, like we part we go to this party. They have a live band there, and that was our big thing in college. It was like like some like school students would have a band, right. you know? Yeah, yeah. And like it was always so fun to go to like a house show. show. Yeah. Like, yeah. So they were a band on the roof and I'm jumping into a pool and I'm 
in Hawaii with like my friends from Texas and my friends from Hawaii. And I'm like, what the hell? And then one of them there was like, oh, this party's getting busted. You guys like, let's go to this beach called sex on the beach. And the whole party, and it was probably like 50 people was like, okay, we like load up in cars, like DDs, whatever, and go to this beach. It's Yokohama beach called sex on the beach. Um, and all get out there and it's like sun is going down and bonfires, whatever, and we drink t- and we pass out and I like wake up in the sand at like six thirty in the morning. I'm just laying like in the sand. Slept on the beach. Yeah, we all slept on the beach. Do you have sex like, on the beach though? Probably. I was blacked out. <laughs> we had a bl- big blanket over like five of us, and then like I woke up and like everyone starts waking up, and we all go jump in the ocean. It's like warm in the ocean. I was like, am I like tripping balls? Like this is the best day of my life. It's sun is rising now. Huge mountains all around this beach. And the dolphins come in. And we're like, it's like 20 feet deep. Get out. There's a pod of dolphins. And like, I didn't realize at this point, like, that's where the, dol- the dolphins swim around at 645 in this harbor or whatever. And it's not, there's no buildings or anything. So it's just mountains. And we, it, the sky was pink. There's not, the waves aren't really crashing. They're just like kind of coming in. And if you, we went down and we would swim down and had our eyes open in the salt water. And it was just dolphins everywhere. We go in and it was just like, I was like, boom, this is like the best day of my life. So that, that would be the best day of my life. That's a good question, Mike. That Thanks. was a great that answer. That was such a good question. I mean, you got something from 2019. Wait, I'm so sorry. You 20, were 19. 20, in 2019 because you were born in? 1996. Oh, I, was, you were, I thought five. you were saying 2000. I think you were born in 95. Five. I thought, did you not, do you not want to say how old you are? You don't know what year you are born in? Well, I always say I'm 24, but I'm 25. I think you're born. 95. What do you want for your birthday? I don't like. I don't. I never celebrate my birthday. What's the best birthday gift you've ever gotten, or one that you remember? Well, I'm coming. Yeah. Come. Are you gonna have a birthday party this? Okay. I want to have a birthday party. <laughs> I'm, I'm pulling. I'm pulling a Connor on his own birthday. <laughs> yeah, like, you're welcome. I'm to coming. Come. Oh, the oh, thing yeah. is, like, oh, anyone that with anyone that wants to come, I'm like, please come. That'd be fun. I haven't planned it out yet, but I want to do. One of my friends is a DJ, Nico Sway, and um, I want to like go to Joshua Tree and do the DJ set disco nights and have the sun be setting in the desert and just like dance my ass off yes with like all my friends yes but there has to be like a pool or some body of water because i'm gonna jump in afterwards they have airbnbs and stuff they do yeah pools, but like yeah. i'm like the more i tell people they're like we're coming i'm like oh I'm i've like never been to 25 people Tree. oh it's incredible it's so fun dude i know and i've it's been out here now vibes. for like Six seven years. It's like I it's a blast. It's been. super close. I know. It's so I easy know. to get to. My friend has a tiny house there. Ooh, how tiny? Are we talking like tiny. Halloween village? No, it's like a, <laughs> 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 it's a tiny house. Like I could only stay there with like me and my girlfriend. Yeah. Okay. Are you single? I am. What do you look for in a girl? Pulse. <laughs> the good first <laughs> eyes. Yeah. Teeth. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I don't know. Like, I I haven't dated since college, really. Because I'm not I've been, a big like, relationship moving. guy. Not yet. Like, I could see myself. Like, I have nothing against it. I just like haven't crossed the bridge yet. Of you, like, and you're settling into your own groove of yeah, like also I mean, moving to a new place, and then now with everything kind of opening up, like you really need to right. find your own place and your own pace. Right. I literally it has not even. I've never had the moment where I'm like I really am trying to date right now. It's weird. So what's your, t- so what's your type? Or you don't have like a type? Uh, Do they need to be as funny as you? Do they need to be like as I well like, known as you? I just like no, no, absolutely. I think like just independence. Like I don't like, I don't like when someone likes me back. Like I don't like when a girl is like, oh, like I like the chase and being like, oh, this girl's so far out of my league, and then she likes me back. I'm like, mm, I'm over it. <laughs> 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 Which is like a disease that I have to cross. Like I'm like gonna have to deal with that. Yeah. It's like, I, but I'm not super affectionate, and I'm not. I don't like express emotions the same way other people do. So like my close friends, I'm meaner to than like my kind of friends. Yeah. And like my like if I'm yeah I don't know like if I was in a relationship like. I don't know how that would come across. <laughs> like, <laughs> like ripping on people is a love language for you. Yeah, like I don't like I don't feel the need to check in with like my close friends every day and be like, hey, like blow like if I'm in a group text with you or like a Snapchat group or whatever, I don't feel the need to like text you individually. You know? Right. <laughs> Does that make sense? But like a yes, lot of my friends will call here. me and I'm like, what do you want? And they're like, I was just saying hi. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, I'm doing shit. Like, <laughs> like group text me. But um I don't know how that translates. This is like therapy right now, because 
Do you have a therapist? I need one. Have you ever been to therapy? Nope. You should get one. I want one. I used to go to one, and I really enjoyed it. Why don't you anymore? Uh, Because I feel like I really got over what I needed to talk about and figure out. And also, my health insurance changed. Yeah. So I mean, the insurance I... is one thing, but also, you just bought $1,000 worth of Halloween Villages, so I think maybe <laughs> call them back. That's my therapy. The joy, <laughs> the, joy, <laughs> the joy that it provides me, though, I feel great. Oh, my I'm therapist so, would yeah, be like, I'm... treat yourself. Buy it if it would if it would make you happy and you're not I'm digging glad. yourself into a financial hole. Right, that's all that matters. No, I'm happy that you're happy and making good investments. What are you doing this weekend? Uh, I'm going to Michigan tomorrow morning at what part? six a.m. Uh, the UP, the Upper Peninsula, the Upper Peninsula. Nice. What did you also call Studio City? Stu 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 Stu. Uh, I, we're going the to the hell? Stu. That is some Newport shit. If I've ever heard, <laughs> I'm it. going to the Stu Stu. Um, I've never. I've lived out here now for two or three years. I think he makes once. stuff up though. That's why he's so cool because he makes up his uh, own logo. So, but a lot of my friends, my f- sorry, I keep like playing with this. It's okay. No, it's okay. I just like looked um, up. I have severe ADHD, so that's why I, like always touching shit. Yeah. That's why I think I get so drunk. Is like I'm always grabbing a drink and cracking it and drinking it, and drinking, it and drinking, it and drinking. It. And but like, then you get a Topo Chico and you get that same oh, satisfaction. But I'll down that. I'll down like a sparkling I, water. I, I in, like, vibe five to minutes. ADHD. Like if it's a party, I, yeah, I'm always like keeping myself it's fun. busy. Yeah. yeah. So I you're going to this, Michigan? Going to Michigan. My family's up there. My grandma t- just turned ninety something. You're Mimi? No, get, uh, Petite. Uh, Mimi, bless her heart. She she's in Idaho, but the, both my grandmas live like in this bizarre area of the country that no one goes to. So. It's fun to go up with the family and then, like, I'm going to be off. They don't have Wi-Fi. Like, when I was working my jobs previously, we have to go for, like, six or seven days because it's so hard to get to. Because the UP, you take three flights to get there, and then you have to drive because you can't, like, fly in. Oh, it's middle of nowhere. It's middle of nowhere. They, when I was working previously, and, like, I'll have to do this in the next seven days. I have to go to a McDonald's that's like five miles from her house to get Wi Fi. Oh, and there's no and service I bring on your my phone? laptop and I edit and I do my calls and I do my emails. And then there's no service. It's a no. McFi. Yeah, it's crazy. It's so, it's, it's, but it's nice. It's probably pretty healthy though to just be like forcefully off the grid. It's so nice. Yeah, I just like do yard work with my dad. And what then, are you on the weekend after? Pool party at Mike's house? Yeah. Come okay. on over. Oh my God. Fuck. You'd, you'd be a great vibe at. Oh, I would love pool I, parties. I love pool parties. Okay. Well, we're going to make it happen. Be pool parties. Yeah, let's do it. This was really great. Are we wrapping up right now? I think so. You don't Can think I? we should go for like another hour and a half? <laughs> do you? If you want to. You I'm said you want to go see Lady Efron after this. Yeah, so, Lady uh, Efron. We, um, it's our one year anniversary of meeting each other today. Oh, yeah. wow. So we're going to go get drinks. Barney's Beanery. <laughs> do you guys go on Wea? Yes, you guys made a little TikTok there we that did. one time, and I was in every time I was driving by it, I was like, "Fibula and uh, Lady Dude, Efron were so there." Like, I I'm really, s- I'm so drawn to that disgusting sticky dive bar. You're going here. You're going there yeah, right do after you guys this. Come. Oh, come because I'm already going to go down there, and Patricia could come and meet us. Yeah, perfect. I love it. Let's all go. I sure. really want to meet her. Oh, cool. God, yeah. <laughs> so exciting. I'm so excited. This oh, is so we, have plans. We, we, we do have to wrap up. Okay, <laughs> let the people know where they can find you. Yeah, just Fibula 2As on TikTok, Fibula 1A on Instagram, Fibula 2As on YouTube. We got Talk Show Pod with Remy, ba- Remy Bader on we, anywhere what? you can get podcasts. We never even asked about Fibula. Where did yeah, you have well, that name? Have you said that before, why you have that name? Well, you know ACL, Austin City Limits. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Have we talked about this? Did we talk about it? I think we it? did, but we had had way too many drinks. Yeah. Um, there's no story, but I've I've been trying to make up a lie right now. I'll just tell the truth. My friends always used to come up to me at this festival, and they'd be like, because I used to have the flippy hair, <laughs> and they'd run up, and they'd be like, oh, like, Connor, 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 like, can we get a picture? Can we get a picture? Which, like, now it happens, which is really funny. Yeah. And Or your friends, like, pretended you were famous. They used to come up and do that in crowds, and I would be like, oh, guys, like, stop. <laughs> and then um, we'd take pictures, and then everyone in the crowd would be like, who is that? Who is it? Who is that? So that we could get through the crowd oh, to get to the front of the thing. Yeah. And they would tell everybody I was on the show with Wizards of Waverly Place. Oh. Like, as a kid. Okay. I, used to, I used to say uh, I was in the movie Big Fish. And I would go, you know, the town scene. I'm, I'm like the third person to the right, and people always go, "Oh my oh god, no way!" Yes, love that that's movie. so cool. No one's ever gonna go. No, back and, and check. no one's gonna go resurface Wizards of Waverly Place to find out who I was. So basically, I was like, I should start getting some followers out of this. So, like, started drinking at ACL, and like, you know, what we're drinking at ACL when we're 19 and 20 is hot water bottles <laughs> shoved in our ass cheeks full yeah. of vodka. So that's what I was drinking, and then. 
I woke up the next day, God knows where, and my na- like username on Instagram was Fibula. Which Wait, is you, funny because you don't remember making this. Username? I don't. I don't remember making it, but like it's so funny because me and my roommate changed our names on the first on the at the same time. My roommate Gabe changed his name to Park Bench. So like we have Park Bench. That's like one word. He has his Instagram handle Park Bench. Park Bench. It's a great and handle. Figure, yeah. Good and like, handle. It was so funny. I think I was trying to get the name Balboa. Because I remember like being like I love that it just rolls off the tongue and then yeah. I ended up with fibula, which like <laughs> it's no, close. It's like a bone. You and probably then, thought then it rhymed island. at the time. And yeah, fibula, Balboa, 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 Balboa Island. Anyways, yeah. yeah, that's it. That's so you just right. that's wait that's the origin. Story. The origin story is just like I needed an easier name to yell out because my my past username was my first and last name, and it was hard to like spell and yell out and like type out and like you want to just be like fibula like the leg bone and then you'd walk into the crowd. And you, you passed Did it everybody. work? Did you yeah. get Oh, yeah. It started, I mean, like, I say it worked. I was like... Like, you got access so, to special sections at ACL? No, I would just walk through. We would just push through the crowd oh, and get to get further to the front. up for, like, yeah. okay, okay. M&M or something. Gotcha. Yeah, but... Wow. That's, that's the origin that's story. Nothing. And then he made it all the way to Hoot and a Half. Who, uh, yeah, I know. Can you believe it? I'm, I need to pinch myself. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I think I may have interrupted you while you were signing off all your stuff. I feel like, did you cover all of it? TikTok, YouTube, podcast. Fibula, fibula, podcast is... All right. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, it was a great time. Connor Wood. Connor Wood. It's a pretty good name, though. Like, oh, my God, that's Connor Wood. Like, that sounds pretty famous. Or it I sounds like you it. own, like, like uh, a car lot. Like, yeah, Con- like a fake Connor name. Wood Ford, like, like Connor a, Wood Honda, like a like Riverdale you, character. Yeah, yeah, you own all the car dealerships in the town. <laughs> when you introduce sense. yourself, is it Connor or you say, Hi, I'm Fibula? I say Connor. Okay. But I go by, like, I like fully, res- I've been responding to Fibula since like sophomore year of college. So it like, oh, like so fi- fi- when, you, when you're fib. out on the street, people say Fibula. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, my license plate is Fibs. Oh. Like, I'm leaning into it. It's okay. easy and it's fun. You got a custom license plate that says Fibs? <laughs> purchased it. Yeah. How much is that? It's fifty dollars fifty dollars for the year. I got mine. It's gonna be L O L Mike. Oh, that's so fun. <laughs> Little Mike. L O L. L O L Mike. Jeez. Okay. That's actually pretty great. Lil I, I ordered... <laughs> You should get Lil Nine. That's what we call a callback in the comedy business, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> All, All right. right. Connor Wood, everybody. Thank you guys. Have Thanks a great day. Thanks for listening. Bye.